All right, well, I just wanted to thank you um, for taking the time today to help us document part of your harvest story. So I thought to start off with, to have you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. Uh, I'm Randy Petticourt. I'm from Dalhart, Texas, and I uh, run a uh, 4-H harvesting outfit. So how'd you kind of get started doing that? Uh, as I was telling you a little bit earlier, uh, uh, there was harvesters that came and, and harvested uh, our family farm in northeast Kansas. Uh, as I was 12, 13 years old, I rode with them after school every night, loved it, uh, ended up growing into it, getting started. So you, like, what did you say about you wrote a letter to... I wrote a letter to the man, first man that I was harvester that I worked for when I was 14, uh, asking him for a job. Uh, he wrote a letter back to me, gave me a job. And uh, so uh, in 1967, uh, I went on a wheat harvest with C2 Gleaners. That was my first year. At 14? At 14. And did you run combine or? Uh, I drove combine because I wasn't old enough to run truck. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been in doing silage? Uh, been in the business? I started out with combines and silage up uh, from 78 to 85. Okay. And then I sold out of the combines and have done silage just since 1985 since. Okay. Um, so could you kind of go over, like, do you follow, like, different stops that you take during a normal harvest season? Um, just, like, where you go? Well, silage, unlike wheat, is a little bit repetitive. Whereas uh -huh. you might cut spring crop, come back, cut fall crop in the same spot. So um, our run isn't... Uh, in relation to the wheat, north, right. south, and north, but more, uh, more in a in a more tighter area. Yeah. So are you kind of in the Delhart area? We're in the Delhart area. We live at at Delhart, Texas now. Yeah. Okay. So you don't really go out. Uh, we travel in midsummer down to around Waco. Okay. And, uh, and back up through Oklahoma. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. And then, how many machines do you run? We run three. Okay. Three machines. Three choppers. Um, have you seen a difference in the machinery, like since you first started to now? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're joking with me. <laughs> yeah. Kind of one of those changes. Been, yeah. We, been like... we well, we started out with uh, homemade machines that were actually built out in okay. in Kansas. Yeah. Uh, -huh. uh Three row heads um, for for narrow row, thirty inch, and two row heads. We uh -huh. had to change head for forty inch corn. Uh huh. And. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, all mechanical. You had to work most of the night on it to make it run the next day. <laughs> and uh, none of the parts fit because they weren't factory built. Right. Um, so we, that's the machines that we started out on and then we moved into John Deere machines. And, uh, and of course now we're into the late model machines and uh, the technology has all changed. Uh, everything has changed. Mm -hmm. Why did you um, start out with like those homemade? Was that kind of what the best was that? That's the what uh, was the best thing out on the market at the time. Okay. Um, John Deere shortly came with the 5400 right, right in that area. Uh, and it was a less horsepower machine, but was more efficiently built. Uh -huh. And so they began to outdo the homemades and the farm hand cutters, and so we had to look to keep up with. Yeah, efficiency. Yeah, with the competition. Mm -hmm. um, what has the change in the cost of machinery been like? Do you remember My first, first? silage cutter cost yeah. me $7,000. Really? Yeah, it about cost that to change knives now. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so it went from $7,000 machine to start with, um, and I think they're close to a million dollars now for a machine. Wow. Um, did you say how many you run? Three. Three, okay. Um, how do you, do you really have much, I mean, change in like how you move the equipment from down to Waco and back, or do you? Uh, no, we have our own flow boys and move, okay. much like the combiners move. Uh-huh. Has that changed at all? Has that kind of always been what that's you use? always That's always been. Similar mode of transportation, some kind of a trailer to haul equipment and, mm -hmm. and move, yeah. Um, what are your, do you, so being around that you're around home, do you, you just stay at your house or like when you're on the road, do you kind of? We stay at home at okay. our house and, and then the, and the boys are at the motel. Okay, they're in the yeah. motel. Mm -hmm. um, 
Does your, um, I think you mentioned your wife, does she run, does she work with you or? Uh, she's with me all the time. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, we've been married 40 years also. We got business a year, we got married. Okay. And uh, so, so she's been 40 years also. Does she drive truck at all? No, okay. no, she keeps the home front. Okay, well, that's a we good job. We homeschooled our children and she, so she taught our children and, uh, and our boys are back in Kansas and took up other professions. Um, did your, so did your boys grow up kind of going along and like they helping did. you? They did when they were younger and, uh, and as they got up older and wanted to get married and have families, they decided this wasn't the life for them. Yeah, something different. So. What have you valued about um, them growing up on doing um, silage work? Oh, you know, uh, it, much the way I heard another guy talk today, uh, the boys learned good work ethic and so uh, they don't have any, any trouble in whatever they do. Uh-huh. You know, and then we have a daughter that's uh, 37 too. Okay. Um, do you guys, do you hire um, help from somewhere? Or is it we just have like, H2A workers. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we hire 18 guys. Okay, that's mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. Um, has that always been kind of around that number, 18, or has it? Um, no, it, it grows a little bit every year to maybe by a couple of guys. Uh-huh. And um, we was, uh, we've been with the H2A program since it started. Okay. Um, have you seen a change, like an employment, just the type of guys that come out? Yeah, I, you, there is a change, but it's just, I don't know how to put a finger on it because uh -huh. the world's changing. Yeah, it, society's yeah. changing, all countries are changing. Uh, but we have a lot of boys that come from troubled homes and, uh, when they when they come, they're pretty thankful to be with us, uh -huh. and they tow the mark pretty hard, and we're pretty hard on them for a year or two. But if they'll stay with us, uh, we we've, we've had a lot of uh, uh, glorious testimonies from, from young boys that mm -hmm. have gotten their lives straightened out through harvest. Um, so do they c stay with you? Like, do they come back for seasons uh, in a row or is it just uh, most of my crew i would say half of my guys have been back with me 10 to 11 years uh -huh. and the other half four to five okay and there's usually a couple of new ones each year okay so they kind of stick around and keep coming back they yeah it's a family uh-huh that's cool yeah. um we've got even five wives that come along really <laughs> <laughs> how has that um impacted you just the the guys that work for you, has that impacted you at all? Oh, uh, yeah, it, it just it makes you want to uh, be a good testimony of their lives. Mm -hmm. you know, it makes you want to be a good father to them. Mm -hmm. you know, makes you want them uh, to know that, that Christ is what they need to be thinking about. Yeah, where they're, what they can trust, or who they can trust their life with. Oh. Um, have there been changes in like in the weather that have affected? Weather always affects. Uh huh. If you if you're a harvester, weather right. affects. So you you just you just deal with what you're given. Yeah. And you always have to be ready to change. You you make a plan and uh, it changes before you ever get out the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you got to make a new plan. And, and the weather does that. Yeah. Right. Um, what have you enjoyed most about? doing what you do? Uh, just all the people over the years, uh, people from the equipment companies to the, the, to the clients, uh, it, you know, and some of our customers were on third generation of their family. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've watched kids grow up and we've watched grandkids be born. We pulled there at funerals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to the numbers of boys that have come through the crew over the years, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's overwhelming mm -hmm. blessing. Yeah, yeah. I think about all the. I mean, you said you had eighteen that work for you. I mean, the the impact or the impact on the lives that you've had, and then they impact in a positive way too after after working for you. Uh, what would you say is like is the biggest pressure that you might face or have faced during harvest season or maybe throughout your career? Mm. 
Mm, well, that's a good thing I'm old and don't have very good memory. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, pressure's what you make it, because in, yeah. in what we do, there's pressure every day. Yeah. And so uh, I try to uh, just take what I'm given each day and do the best I can with it. Uh, make sure that I tell people what I'm going to do and do what I say I'm going to do and tell them if I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And that takes all the pressure off mm -hmm. because it, it, it puts it out there and gets it off your back. You're not carrying it around by yourself. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, is it what you expected it would be? like Harvesting? Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up on the farm. Yeah. And... Uh, and the equipment that we had was junk. And the people that I went with to start with had really nice equipment. Uh -huh. And so it made me an equipment lover, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. So I've always enjoyed the latest and the greatest and good equipment. Uh -huh. And uh, so th there are always things in life that are going to disappoint. Right. You know, uh, I, I know that I gave too much of my heart to this business and not enough to my family for a number of years. And so wasn't expecting that. But, you know, when you're a young man starting out, and I've told several young guys that are harvesting that, uh, you know, your God is first and your family second, and this harvesting business is third. Mm -hmm. And if you can keep that in mind, you'll be successful. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was another question I was going to ask you, is just what advice you would give to that young would, guys. That would yeah. be it. Mm -hmm. Starting out on that. Don't, don't get your priorities straight. Yeah, that's good advice. All, all the rest will fall in place. Really good advice. Um, what is something that maybe someone taught you that kind of changed the way you thought about things or did things? Um, I don't know if you had a role model in your life. Well, a role model would have been my first boss, George Becker. Um, and, and the work that he did for people was always particular. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of competition, a lot of people getting in the custom business and had been in the custom business. Uh, but George was always real particular that we always did an excellent job. And so it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. If you do a good job, you'll have a good job. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Um, what are you most grateful for, being able to do what you do? Is there anything that, um, any rewards that maybe you've experienced because of, of your work? I guess my biggest reward is the perseverance of my life. Because this business will test yeah. marriages, families, and so my biggest reward is is my marriage, mm -hmm. um, and, and how that we persevered through this business. Because this business is not all roses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah. I talk a little bit more about that. I guess like. Your, how's that got you through maybe some hard years? Um, has she, I don't know. <clears throat> well, uh, I guess, in the, you know, the simple fact that I know that she's a praying woman. Uh -huh. So her prayers have brought us through. You know, when, when you do something for 40 years and you start from where we started yeah. and started having babies. And, uh, you know, we bought a silage cutter and the, the first year, one week later, the engine blew up. Oh, no. <laughs> and we had one truck, and uh, the next week, the transmission went out on a, our first year. So that was just the beginning of the trials. Uh huh. So, you know, through raising the kids and me being gone a lot, uh, and her per perseverance and prayers and going through the tough times in a marriage. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're be able we're enjoying the fruits of our labor. Yeah. You put in the hard work and. Yes, and so the re- the most rewarding thing is that if you persevere and you're not foolish, you will be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Mm-hmm. Talk about um, maybe how your how your faith has impacted what you do. Um. I would say that our business never really began to flourish as it has until until I came to Christ. So, uh, did you come to Christ like after you started your business? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, was there? I didn't grow up in a church. Anymore. Okay. Huh, that's a cool story. So, and I don't know if this is, you know. Yeah. This is what y'all want to hear, but, but you know, folks, it's, what it, it's what's important. Uh-huh. And when we forget what's important, yeah. then why are we doing it? Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah, your perspective really uh, changes things on yeah. your own. I, I, was, I, I was really uh, enlightened to hear our speaker last night go to the Psalms. And, and I pray that our, can, uh, that our harvest association, that that is our core value, that that, that is what we're about. Mm-hmm. Because this persecution of, in, of this country uh, is coming and, and our group can withstand it in, with unity. Mm-hmm. And so I was proud of that. Mm-hmm. So. Um. Do you have any like harvest stories that? Do I have any harvest? Yeah, stories? Yeah, that you'd no. like to share. Forty years? No, there's no, no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you got plenty. Oh, you know this interview could go on forever oh, if you I wanted know. to start that. I could. <laughs> I could listen to them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We there there are many funny stories from harvest, uh, and yeah, you could write a book. Uh, do you have a, Do you have one in particular, uh, maybe two? You can think of <coughs> any fond memories, maybe from growing up or your first year going along. You, you know, most funny stories are at somebody else's expense. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so, I, so I really don't. I really don't want no, to. No, no, that's to, okay. To tell a funny story because it would be at somebody else's uh-huh. expense. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's usually something somebody did, but and. Uh, and that's one thing that I stress to my crew is uh, let's have fun. Yeah. You know, let's go out there and do the best we can. But this is about enjoying our day and let's have fun. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, our crew has a lot of fun joking with each other, you know, ribbing with each other and stuff. And, uh, yeah. and they're really fast to dig in and help each other also. So, uh, yeah. Well, it sounds like a Cinderella story, but it really is. You, you've enjoyed your past 40 years. Yes. Yep. Doing what you do. Yep. Um, let's see if I have any other questions. Um, I think one of maybe the final question might be is, what year did you join the U.S. Custom Harvester Organization? You all would have to look back in your records, but I'm... I'm uh, I don't think that, you know, the first seven or eight years it was going, what did it start? Um, 83. Okay, so I think that I was around 90 to uh-huh. 92, somewhere in there before I joined. Uh-huh. And I haven't been active maybe as I should should be or at times thought, well, you know, I better sign up and do that. But uh, as I've heard them speak about it, I kind of feel like now might be more the time to step into some leadership role with that um, because a young person building a business, he doesn't have time to be a leader here. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's if he does, he's a better manager than I am and mm-hmm. I commend him for it. But I can see the commitment of time uh, to help this organization uh, demands Demands a lot. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I can see and commend those guys that are doing it. So, uh, what have you? What would you say you've gained by being a member 
I mean, is there? Um, well, like they've given us a lot of insight on the legals uh, as we've gone through the years, but uh, probably the biggest gain is the camaraderie you build. Yeah. You know, and through the years you might have uh, had, you know, issues with other harvesters over something or other, and it's a good place to mend bridges. Yeah. It, it's a good place for everybody to be at peace with one another. You know, if there's bridges that need to be mended, they get done here. Yeah. In places like this. Uh huh. People kind of come together. Where they can come together, look at each other, and say, "Hey, I'm sorry about that." You know, if if it's if it's something that happened. Uh huh. So I, I think it's good for that. It, yeah. It builds the camaraderie of the business. Right. Uh, do you, were you kind of one of the first few like silage operations that maybe joined, or were there quite a few? Um, I believe Rex Logan joined about the same time I did. Uh, Al Lutz was in there a little, a few years before us. Silage just came on later than the combining, so uh -huh. um, y'all brought silage in maybe seven, eight years later, something like that. In, in, uh, and I didn't start out right away. Yeah. You know, so. Um. Well, I think that might be all I have for you, unless there's anything that you would like to share anything else or no i'm uh, just uh thankful to be a a part of it part uh -huh. of the association and uh, you know thankful for the years the lord's given us in this business and uh, you know m many people have had different opportunities not as not as blessed and you know or maybe more so uh, but the business has been good to us, mm -hmm. and not just to, as a financial thing, but as just a life. Yeah, yep. yeah. I think it's I think it's all about how you look at it, and I think. Yep. Yep. Um, well, just kind of want to thank right. you again for. Thank you very much. Down here, and <laughs> thank you for everything you do for the industry and the organization too. So okay. that's well appreciated. Well, thank you much. Mm -hmm. Bye.